Hey everybody, it's Sophie and Catherine from Georgetown Cupcake. Today we're gonna to show you how to make our pumpkin spice cupcakes with a maple cream cheese frosting. They're the perfect dessert for Thanksgiving. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing you wanna do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. For the pumpkin cupcake batter, you will need the following ingredients. One and a quarter cups sifted all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons baking powder, one quarter teaspoon salt, one teaspoon ground cinnamon, half a teaspoon of ground allspice, half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, one cup granulated sugar, three quarters of a cup pumpkin puree, one tablespoon honey, eight tablespoons of unsalted butter at room temperature, two eggs at room temperature, and three tablespoons of hot water. Okay, great. So now we have our eight tablespoons of unsalted butter, and we're gonna add this to our mixer, and we're gonna cream it with our sugar together. You want to cream your butter and sugar together for three to five minutes until they're light and fluffy. Hey, it's right. good. Okay, now we're ready to add our egg. We're gonna add our eggs slowly, incorporating one egg at a time. If you don't have a stand mixer at home, don't worry, you can always use a handheld mixer. You may need to put a little more elbow grease into it to get it combined, but it works just as fine. I remember when we were kids, we had the, the rotary, rotary hand mixers and we were able to mix. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is great. It looks okay. good. Okay, now we're gonna add our pumpkin puree. We're gonna add three quarters of a cup. Um, this is canned pure pumpkin puree. Um, you can get organic pumpkin now at the supermarket um, that's um, already pureed. But if you have fresh pumpkins at home um, during the season, you can also just um, roast that and puree it in a food processor. That works well to totally your preference. Okay, got that in. Great, we're gonna mix that in. And we're gonna add um, one tablespoon of honey. This is clover honey. We actually love clover honey. Um, but you can definitely use wildflower if you have it too. We're going to add one tablespoon honey. This is one of my favorite fall recipes. I love the way it smells and it tastes and it pairs so well with that maple cream cheese frosting. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited for Thanksgiving. Okay, great. So we're mixing that up. Be sure to stop your mixer every once in a while and you want to scrape down the sides of the bowl mm -hmm. just to make sure everything is really well incorporated. Just scrape down along the sides, maybe along the paddle too. It's all nice combined. There we go, we're gonna mix that. Okay, now we're ready to prepare our dry ingredients. We're gonna take uh, our flour. We have one and a quarter cups of sifted all-purpose flour. We're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of salt, add that in. We've got one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And then we're gonna add some cinnamon. We use one teaspoon of cinnamon. For this recipe, if you want to add a little more cinnamon, you definitely can. It's not gonna affect how the cupcakes come out. Depends on how much cinnamon you love. We like cinnamon. Um, we're gonna add half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and we're gonna add half a teaspoon of allspice. And again, you can adjust um, the spices um, however you like. If you like more nutmeg in your pumpkin spice, definitely feel free. You can tweak it slightly. Just don't add a ton more because then it can be very, very strong. So I'm sifting this now with a, with a whisk. If you don't have a handheld sifter at home or a rotary sifter, you can definitely use a whisk. It's a great kitchen hack. Just mm -hmm. take a whisk, just get all the bumps and lumps out of your flour. Great, so now that we have our dry ingredients, we're gonna add this in thirds. So right now, what we wanna do is add it slowly to our batter so we don't collapse all those air pockets and bubbles that we made in our batter. Yeah, we don't wanna dump it in all at once. So just slowly at a, a bit of time. And then um, after the, uh, the first, after we add the first third of our flour mixture, we're gonna add a third of our wet mixture. And in this case, we're gonna use um, hot water. So we're gonna add three tablespoons of hot water. So I'll add a tablespoon at a time. Okay, so I'm gonna add a third of the dry. Okay. I'll let Catherine mix it up a bit. It already smells so good. Can you yeah. add the spice to the pumpkin? It smells like Thanksgiving. We're gonna add one tablespoon of hot water. You wanna make sure it's not too hot, but um, just something like a little, a little warm. That way it'll mix um, better in your batter. Second third of our flour mixture. And I'm gonna add another tablespoon of water. And then last third of our flour mixture is going to go in. Yeah. Okay, and last bit of water. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, great. That looks amazing. Okay, I'm going to stop. Be sure to scrape down the sides of the bowl again. Make sure you get every little bit of the flour 
kind of mixed in from along the sides, along the paddle, the top of the paddle. I just want to make sure everything gets in nice and mixed. And that that looks so amazing. Good. So good. I love baking pumpkin spice cupcakes. This is one of my favorite fall recipes. We do it every year for Thanksgiving. It's always a hit. And we have it in the bakery all of October and all of November because it's such a popular flavor. You don't want pumpkin spice season to end really ever. I don't either. I love it. When pumpkin spice season starts, it gets me so excited for the yeah. holidays. Because um, it's really kind of like the kickoff of, yeah. of the holidays. Yeah. Um, right now we have our cupcake tin and I'm going to line it with 12 paper liners. If you don't have paper liners at home, you can always grease the pan using butter. Okay. I always like using these. You always find fun festive ones too for the holidays as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brown's nice for Thanksgiving. So yeah. nice too. We use the Georgetown cupcakes, but actually they are for Thanksgiving too. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Now it's time to scoop the batter. We love using an ice cream scoop at Georgetown Cupcake. It ensures that each cupcake comes out the same size. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes when you use you know, a teaspoon or a tablespoon at home, you get some large cupcakes, some small ones, mm -hmm. but this way they all come out perfectly sized. That. It's always nice having kind of like a baking partner too in the kitchen. Someone to hold your cupcake pan while you scoop. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite part of Thanksgiving, Sophie? Well, I like the stuffing. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the stuffing too. And the cupcakes. If I'm, if I'm choosing a, a dessert, I love our pumpkin cheesecake cupcakes because it's kind of the cross between the pumpkin pie and the cupcake. And um, they're individual portions. Yeah. Yeah. Those are one of my favorites as well, mm -hmm. and they are great for things I think. Yeah. Okay, great. So now we've got these all scooped and they're ready to go in the oven. Okay, perfect. We're going to bake these in the oven for 18 to 20 minutes. We're going to start checking at 15 minutes and put it in a toothpick to see if it comes out clean. What we don't want to do is over bake them. So we start checking it at 15 minutes and that toothpick comes out clean. Take them out then because the cupcakes will actually continue to bake in the pan when you remove them. So you just want to make sure you give them enough time to bake but not over bake. Okay. And while Sophie's putting those in the oven, I'm going to reset and we're going to work on our maple cream cheese frosting. For the maple cream cheese frosting, you will need the following ingredients. Six tablespoons of unsalted butter, eight ounces of cream cheese, six cups of sifted confectioner sugar, a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, one teaspoon of pure maple extract. If you don't have pure maple extract, you can always substitute using a quarter cup of pure maple syrup. Hey everybody, we're back and now it's time to make the maple cream cheese frosting. This is one of my favorite frostings to make. It's so delicious and it's really easy to make at home too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cream together our cream cheese and our butter. So we have six tablespoons of unsalted butter that we're gonna put in here and we've got eight ounces of cream cheese that we're gonna put in here as well. There we go. We like to use a uh, European style butter when we're baking, even in our batter. Um, we always suggest if you can find the European style butter at the grocery store, definitely um, try to get that because it does make a difference when you're making your, your baked goods and your frosting. Okay, so we're going to cream together the cream cheese and the butter until they're nice and well combined, nice and creamy and smooth. Okay, so right here we've got our six cups of sifted confectioner sugar. If you don't have a rotary sifter at home, just like the flour, you can always use a whisk just to get all those lumps and bumps out. I often use it at home, it's just faster sometimes. Perfect. We want to make sure it's nice and dispersed. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna that, set this aside. Mm -hmm. And so, this is looking good. Mm -hmm. It's looking good. I think we're ready to add our sugar. Okay, so I'm gonna slow this down. So a really important thing is to always Keep your mixer on low speed when you're adding the confectioner sugar. Mm -hmm. I know there have been times where if you dump in all the confectioner sugar at once, you're going to have this huge cloud of sugar come up in your face and mm -hmm. it's not pleasant. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So I've got the mixer on low now and I'm going to add the confectioner sugar very slowly in until it's well combined. Make sure you go nice and slow. You'll have a sugar explosion. Sometimes I like to go a cup at a time. So if you have a measuring cup and you want to just, you know, take it, scoop it and put it in a cup at a time, wait till it gets combined. And then once you see that it is combined with the cream cheese butter mixture, you can kick up your speed on your mixer until it becomes nice and smooth and creamy again. If you don't have a stand mixer at home, don't worry, you can make this recipe with a handheld too. It just yeah. takes a little bit more elbow grease. Mm -hmm. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna add a little bit more of our confectioner sugar. 
a lot of people ask us to, you know, can I substitute a lower fat cream cheese? And you definitely can. So if you want to use a reduced fat cream cheese, it works perfectly well. But it's the holidays, so it's the yeah. holidays. <laughs> and it's been a crazy year. Yeah. So we're gonna splurge yeah. on the full fat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That looks great. Okay, I'm gonna add the last bit of our confectioner sugar. There we go. And then I'm gonna mix that on high. You really can't overdo this step when you're mixing on high at the very end because you really want your frosting to come out nice and smooth, mm -hmm. fluffy, marshmallow-like. Yeah. And when you're piping it um, onto the cupcakes, it just looks so beautiful. It's a little pillow, like a little pillow frosting. Mm -hmm. An airy pillow. It smells good so far, we haven't even added the maple yet. Now that we have our base cream cheese frosting, I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. We like to use a pure vanilla extract, um, so if you can find one in the grocery store, we really recommend using a pure vanilla. Mm -hmm. This is a pure vanilla Madagascar bourbon one, mm -hmm. which is also really great mm -hmm. too. Okay, so I'm gonna mix that in. It smells really good too. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna use one teaspoon of pure maple extract. And this is really great. Um, you only need a teaspoon of it. If you don't have this at home, you can definitely substitute with a quarter cup of pure maple syrup, which we have here. Mm -hmm. So you can also add a little bit more too if you want to increase the flavor. Mm -hmm. um, but I really do love this maple extract. It smells amazing and it gives it a beautiful yeah. beige autumn color to yeah. the frosting. And a little goes a long way. Yes. And you feel free to adjust it. If you want it to be more maple add more. If you want it to be a little less maple add a little less. Oh, it looks so, oh, so good, good, right? Oh, I love this. This is like our go-to fall frosting. It looks fantastic. Okay, I think we're ready. Yep. Ready to frost our cupcake. I'm gonna take our paddle off. Mm -hmm. Sophie's gonna hold my frosting bag for me. This is where it's good to have a second pair of hands in the kitchen. Teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yep. All right. Oh, this looks so good. I'm gonna try a little bit. It smells good. Mm, so good. Okay. So we have our plastic frosting bag here and it's outfitted with a metal tip. We like to use a really wide mouth tip when we're mm. frosting to make our signature swirls. Mm. So you can definitely find that tip. You can find them anywhere these days, mm -hmm. especially at craft stores too. They always have like a baking aisle. Mm -hmm. You can find them online as well. Okay, so I am gonna scoop the frosting into the frosting mm -hmm. bag. So he's gonna hold it for me. There we go. It's nice and stiff. Nope. But not too stiff. Yep. And it's beautiful looking. Perfect. Oh my god, it smells so it good. Smells amazing. So this this frost. I could eat it just like this. <laughs> me too. I really could. This stuff is dangerous. I'm gonna keep her mom away from this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So we got it all loaded up in our bag. I'll let Catherine frost. Okay, we've got our cupcakes out right. of the oven. They look oh. like this. They look amazing. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take them out to cool. Mm -hmm. They look like they're ready to go. Yeah. So this frosting will frost 12 cupcakes. I do like to have a lot of frosting on each one of my cupcakes. So if you do have leftover frosting, don't worry, you can always save it. If you put it in a um, Tupperware, you can store it in the freezer. And if you're gonna reuse it, it's great for, for making like a pumpkin bread, pumpkin muffins, or um, make pu more pumpkin cupcakes. Uh, taking it out of the freezer, let it come to room temperature for I would say um, around an hour to an hour and a half and then try to whip it up again and it'll come out smooth and beautiful just like this. So I don't like to waste anything, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm probably going to use all, all the frosting this okay. time. Mm -hmm. Okay, to make the signature swirl, what you're going to do is you're going to hold your frosting bag from the top and you're going to apply pressure to the middle of the bag. And once you start squeezing, I always say don't stop because once you stop squeezing, the frosting will stop coming out of the bag and then it'll break your swirl. So once you start, don't stop. We're gonna start in the center of our cupcakes and then we're gonna go squeeze, push pressure all around in a circle and come back down in the center with a burst of pressure like that. Looks beautiful. And that's your signature swirl right there, you can see. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do another one. I'll go very slow for you. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is gonna start in the center of the cupcake, go around in the circle and come back down in the center with a burst mm -hmm. of pressure. And it just takes practice, mm -hmm. you know, it really does. Yeah. I, you know, I remember in the beginning when we first opened Georgetown Cupcakes, Sophie wouldn't let me frost any of the cupcakes. And then I had to prove to her that I could frost 
I know. I think I am the well. Obsessed. Really, I we had baked so many, I couldn't keep up, and so I finally had to like relent, like Catherine Frost. But now she claims she's a better froster than me. So, okay, great. So remember, start in the center of your cupcake, go around in a circle, and come back down in the center of the burst of pressure. Start in the middle, around in a circle, and come back down in the center of the burst of pressure, and then center around, and there you go. Twelve beautifully frosted pumpkin spice cupcakes with maple cream cheese frosting. So we're gonna set these aside and then we're gonna work on the fondant for the decoration on top. Should we go grab Isa? Let's go grab Isa. Okay. Okay, we're back and Isa is here and we're gonna be making fondant decorations for our pumpkin spice cupcakes for I'm Thanksgiving. I'm very excited. I love fondant. It's like Play-Doh. It is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like take it and I'm just gonna like I'm gonna like. What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna eat some of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna eat some of it. So what what are we gonna do for the decorations? How should we decorate the cupcakes for fall and Thanksgiving? Mm. So I'm thinking of Mama. Okay, I've got an idea what that I'm gonna do. do. I'm gonna do something a little crazy. I'm gonna make a little bit of a turkey face on mine. What? Yeah, so I'm gonna make a turkey face on my cupcake. Oh, okay. What are you gonna do? Uh, I think I'm gonna do like a fall pumpkin or gourd. I'm gonna go crazy. I'm just gonna do whatever I want. You're gonna go rogue. I'm gonna go yeah. rogue. Yeah. <laughs> She's gonna do whatever she wants. I guess it's gonna yeah. be a surprise. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so what we're gonna do for me is I'm gonna take my brown fondant. Can you pass me some yellow, Catherine? Yep. So we've got some different yellow. color fondants here. We've got brown, green, red, white, yellow. Uh, and you can get fondant nowadays anywhere at, you know, grocery stores, even craft awesome. stores. They have some aisle there. I'm gonna have some brown. Okay. Yeah. Um, a little bit though. A little bit. Can you pass me some green fondant? Absolutely. So you, if you also, you can also make fondant. It's super. We can teach you. It's yeah, super easy. Do. It's really and it involves marshmallows. So marshmallows. Mm -hmm. Yes, teach me that. Yes, and you can, and then you can that. flavor it anything you want to. So this fondant is already pre-colored that you can get. But if you go to the grocery store, if you go to the craft store, um, or online, you buy fondant and it's white. You can always color it anything you want using gel color. We just oh, always use food coloring. Food coloring, mm -hmm. gel coloring, food coloring. It's we just always color. recommend you wear gloves when you're coloring your fondant because yeah. you don't want to get food color all over your hands because mm -hmm. then you'd be yeah. washing your hands for yes. a very long time to get very that off. Time. You can also mix. I try doing that. Please just don't. I, just don't. Learn yeah. from me. Learn from her. Just don't don't, don't color do fondant it. with I bare hands. You can also no mix problems. colors together, like mixing yellow and red to make orange That is fondant. true. So that's mm -hmm. what we're going to do here. Mm -hmm. Sophie's mixing yellow and red and she's going to make a beautiful I'm orange color. mixing mm -hmm. yellow and brown to make like a Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very light yeah. brown. Oh, nice. Okay. And so what else is really cool about fondant too, guys, is that you can flavor it. So if you wanted to add a little bit of maple extract to your fondant, you can make like a maple flavored mm -hmm. candy, which is actually sounds amazing yeah. right now. Like these. <laughs> or, you know, you can sometimes well, add a little bit of cinnamon, you know, yeah. extract to your fondant to make it taste a little spicy mm -hmm. and cinnamony. Mm -hmm. There's lots of different eat. things you can do your fondant. You can also just eat it too. Like, yeah, you can just, also just, just plain eat it like yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm doing some cool fall gourds. You know, you see like butternut squashes and stuff like that. Yeah, like I'm gonna. Do oh, you're gonna make some, 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 um, some gourds. Autumn. What is it? Autumn. Yeah. I need to go back to school. Yeah. <laughs> Autumnal. Yes. How do you? What is it? What is it? Yeah. Autumnal. Autumnal. Yeah. Autumnal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's autumnal? I'm going to make so it. Right, though. Yeah, okay. If you have any, like, leftover Halloween candy, because it is, you know, close to Halloween, Thanksgiving, you know, we have some candy corns here, which How is great to decorate as well. Of okay, wait, hold on, hold on, my love. What's your favorite part of Thanksgiving? The food. The food? The food. Mm -hmm. Dodie said it was the stuffing for her. Yeah. Yeah, I love stuffing. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, can somebody help me, like, take this fondant off? Oh, whoa. Oh, yeah, you can't do that. That's wet. I told you. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to start over on this side, like I said, where it's dry. That's color. okay. The good thing about fondant is that you can start again. Yep. I'm just going to take a lot of this now. I'm going to take a lot of this. And ha take a lot of this. Oh, and Dewey's not here right now. She's not here. She's, She's feeding Phil up. So we're just waiting for her because we're finished decorating our fondant. All by myself. Oh, you made a beautiful leaf, and I love how you mix the yellow and brown together to make it look like a fall. You're gonna show them the color you made. Look at this. Yeah. I need. All right. So she made this beautiful brown. I think this looks stunning. Doesn't that look great? So Aunt Dodie made a pumpkin and a squash. Here, let me hold up. Hold on. Wait. Okay. So here we got. Aunt Dodie made it. 
cute little 3D pumpkin here. Look at that. Oh, look, she made a little gourd. Yeah. Squash. Yeah. Little 3D one. And then, oh, beautiful, like, fall harvest apple. I don't know if you mm. can see that. It's a little tiny thing. So cute. With this, I'm guys, guys, wait, stop. Stop, stop. I made the best one. Let's see. No, you have not. You made... With my leftover candy corn from Halloween. I have made the cutest... Oh, oh. His feather fell out. Oh, my God. Wait, sorry. <laughs> guys with the leftover candy corn from Halloween. Oh my gosh, I love it. I made a little turkey. Do you see him? Is His he cute? His nose is twisted. He's no. got, hey, turkeys are models. Okay, my, are. Hey. He doesn't have a job they on the run. He's just supposed to be a little turkey guy, but I made little candy corn, you know, plumes, feather plumes, and I cut, no, it, I I cut a candy corn for his I nose. Yeah, okay. So, you okay, got so we, got, we got a 3D turkey, we got some leaves, and, and we, we got, got some pumpkins. Bark. And yeah. we got some wood bark. Okay, we got, we got some wood okay. bark, we got a turkey, we have some leaves, we have some... We have some pumpkins and gourds. Yeah. We are ready to frost our cupcakes and decorate them. Okay, we are back and we have finished our fondant decorations. Now it's time to decorate our cupcakes and we're gonna frost them first. We're gonna use the signature swirl. Isa, you are great at this. Do not be nervous. Very bad. No, you are very good at it. So don't worry, so I got a frosting bag filled that. with our maple and cream cheese frosting. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. could you need to set up on this stool or no? Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Sit up on nice. this stool. I'm not standing on I'm not that. Okay. And I need a bag too, Catherine. Mm -hmm. Here you go, yep. Sophie. Thank one bag you. for you. One bag for you. Mm -hmm. And one bag for me. Okay, if guys. If you guys are bad to signature swirl, don't feel bad because I'm very bad too. No, she's good. You're every, you know what we always say? Practice makes perfect. Okay. So remember to hold the top of your bag like no, this, Isa. Uh, hold the top of your bag up here so it doesn't so sport out the top. So it's yep. signature. Okay, yep. so then you're going to squeeze the center of the bag. You're going to start in the middle of the cupcake. Go around in a circle and come back down in the center with the burst of pressure. Keep squeezing, Beautiful. keep squeezing, keep squeezing all the way, and then the center, boom. Gorgeous! That that looks looks it looks good. It's it looks amazing. great. It looks Don't amazing. worry, it looks if good. You do, 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 like if you do it, I'm gonna put mine. Here we go. We're gonna just start the center, go around, boom, and then we're gonna put our fondant decorations up on top. Yep. Beautiful. And I got Tony. Beautiful. I call them Tony. Tony? Tony the turkey. Tony the turkey. Is it time to taste them? Is it time to eat Tony? Time to Is it time to eat Tony the turkey? Hurry, Catherine, I want to eat this. <laughs> Is it time to eat Tony Hashtag the turkey? Hashtag sisters. Hurry, Catherine, I want to eat this. Here's Tony the okay, turkey. Ready? Stop. Get, get, okay. Ready? I want some chocolate to go down some fudge. Okay, you want to, oh, to put chocolate on your thing? Chocolate chips. Okay. Ooh, and then your beautiful fondant leaf on top. That is, that is actually mm. a really good, that is a great flavor, pumpkin chocolate chip. Mm. Isa, you just came up with a new flavor, pumpkin mm -hmm. chocolate chip. Okay. Okay, Ready? everyone. Should we do the taste test? This is the taste most, time? Do the taste test? Time. Okay, everyone, let's this try it. This is the most important part. Most important. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Mm. So good. Oh mm my god. I love pumpkin spice cupcakes. Mm -hmm. This really is the perfect cupcake for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm a chocolate chips. Mmm. So good. I don't really? want to eat my turkey, but because he's so cute. These are, so, these are so delicious. Maybe I'll eat one of his feathers. Mm. Mm. Okay, well, we hope you guys had fun watching. We had a blast baking with you. And we really hope you guys can try our pumpkin spice cupcakes with maple cream cheese frosting this Thanksgiving. From all of us, happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm.